So it's been about two weeks since Ramsey Dewey made a video dealing with um, what he's what he was pointing out is that if you do a striking system of martial arts or a grappling system of martial arts, you're equally screwed. Though I don't really think that's the case. I do think with a striking martial art, you can do something like slug somebody and try to get out of there. You can slug multiple people and try to get out of there. But the thing is, you are still equal. You're you're pretty screwed if you're facing like three people, three or more people, or even two or more people. You're kind of screwed. Uh, and I'm going to use this, uh, but what I left in his comments section was that the one system of martial arts that I think is superior to uh, both striking martial arts and grappling martial arts is something called combatives, which was created by people like uh, William Fairbairn. And um, I'm going to use this video as an opportunity to review uh, this book here, which is the U.S. Marine Corps uh, close quarter combat handbook. Now, what? First of all, I want to explain this. Regardless, I don't support violence. I don't encourage violence. I don't think I'm not supporting violence by making this video or telling people to commit acts of violence. That's not why I'm making this video. Okay, but what I want to point out is this book is great, um, but from a personal like for an individual, a civilian, practicing uh, basically self-defense, it has a little too much. Some of the good aspects is it covers every aspect of fighting from range to stance to everything from the different, uh, like the ranges of fighting from far to near far to, uh, you know, to close combat. Uh, it also deals with how to hold yourself properly, why you need to remain relaxed to deliver punches properly, things of that nature. And it also talks about the vital striking areas. It's an all-around excellent book, and I highly recommend it to all interested people that are interested in understanding combatives. That being said, that's my review of the book. Now let me get into a little bit of the downfalls that all of us face. Uh, many people that take martial arts think that if they know a martial art, they're the they're just so bad nobody can hurt them. What is ignored a lot is athleticism. Um, with, even with combatives, now combatives, for example, I'm very confident in my ability to defend myself. Okay, but the thing is, what changes the story is, for example, right now I'm a little bit out of shape. Being a little bit out of shape does not correlate well to being able to defend yourself. Now, it is true that because of the techniques I know, I could probably easily defeat somebody much stronger than me simply because of how lethal the techniques are that I know. However, this is not always true. Plus, when you're facing more than one opponent, you need to break free from these opponents, and everybody everybody has this imaginary idea that, well, if somebody grabs me, I'm going to do this, and then I'll be free. It doesn't work that way in a real fight scenario. When you're being grabbed by two or three different people, and somebody else is slugging you, it doesn't, it's not as easy as a Steven Seagal movie, which is very obvious, being that, you know, well, Steven Seagal is, what, 300 pounds now? But my point is, is a lot of people think fights go down like they do in the movies. That's not true. Actually fighting somebody, and Ramsey actually covers this in his video, actually fighting somebody that's trying to fight back is very difficult. Even somebody weaker than you, if there's enough of them, it's going to be hard to fight them off. And then you have to think about things like weapons of opportunity, which is covered in the Marine Corps uh, Close Quarter Combat Handbook. These are things you have to take into consideration. People might be attacking you with bottles and bricks and things of that nature. So you have to take into consideration everything. Um, and you have to be willing. This is the other thing. You can train somebody the techniques to neutralize a threat. Okay, you can teach somebody to jam their thumb into somebody's eye. You can teach somebody to break somebody's nose or punch them in the throat. Whether or not that person can actually do that when the time comes, that's a different story. The psychological aspects of fighting, the ability to literally destroy your opponent, which is what self-defense is. This is not ring fighting. You're not fighting for points. In a self-defense scenario, you're aiming to destroy the person that's attacking you so they can't destroy you. 
that's bluntly what it is. And, and it's scary. It's a very scary thing to know that you can destroy someone's life. And that's a very big thing for a lot of people. They, they, can't, they can't bring themselves to do these things in a self-defense scenario. Whether they don't want to harm the other person or whether they're too afraid to react. That's, you know, that's how it goes. And fear is a very real thing. It can catch you when you're least expecting it. Being afraid in a self-defense situation, that can, it can get you off guard. Some people might be afraid of certain things. There's no telling how you'll react at any given time. If you've been in a lot of fights, you'll know that. There's a good chance you'll react the same way every time if you're if you're a trained person, but and if you've been in a lot of real fights. But anybody that's been in a lot of real fights knows you do not always react on the inside and up here the same way you would uh, every time. It's different every time. There's different emotions going. There's different things going. Fighting out of anger or fighting because somebody called you a name or something like that, that's a stupid reason to fight. But when you're fighting to defend your life, that's a good reason to fight. And the thing is, you have to be willing to actually demolish the opponent in that situation. That's the difference between combatives and martial arts, uh, both traditional martial arts and ring martial arts like MMA. Is because combatives are teaching the militaries of the world to destroy the enemy. Okay, and I noticed uh, in my comment for Ramsey Dewey, I said, not Krav Maga. Why? Because I don't believe in Krav Maga. As you can tell by my video, I did on Krav Maga. But the thing is, traditional martial arts, like honestly, this book here, this, this is karate. That's what they teach. In the Marine Corps, they teach karate. If you have a competent karate instructor, that's what they teach. A competent karate instructor that's serious about karate for self-defense. However, that's not what's taught in karate schools most of the time. Even karate schools that think they're teaching self-defense, that's not what they're teaching a lot of times. And a lot of it goes back to like Okinawa with, oh, first you'll block, then you'll hit. Okay. That's great, you know, if you want to block and then hit. They don't teach an offensive mindset. They don't teach aggression. And you can't really teach that, to be honest. You can't teach people to be aggressive. That comes naturally. But the thing is that if you have a competent karate instructor, they're teaching you what's in this book. Okay, but the thing is, is the person willing to implement it? And also, as I said, Competent karate schools are few and far in between these days. And that's all for this book, this uh, book review and this video.